in the previous video, we have uh, we we upskilled the the wheel logs. So now we have uh, we have properties. We have those uh, uh, petrophysical properties on those cells that have been penetrated by the wheel path, right? So what's being displayed here is the permeability, upscaled permeability. Um, and then we also have the upscaled porosity. Right? And then also the upscaled fluid phases. And for now, all those uh, for now, all the cells um, that have those uh, upscaled properties um, are kind of uh, clustered just along the well path, right? But the next task is uh, for us to actually populate the entire three-dimensional model with those uh, physical properties by using a certain kind of algorithm, right? Based upon based upon the information we have for those uh, cells that have uh, for those cells that have um, have petrophysical properties, and this particular task uh, can be completed in the property modeling tab. So if we click on property modeling, you will be able to actually find lots of buttons that allow us to to to, to complete this ta ta task. We have used the wheel lock upscaling button, right? When we did the wheel lock upscaling, we we used this button, right? And then if you follow the sequence, the, the button right next to it is called the data analysis. Right. But to understand the data analysis dialog box, we will need some understanding about um, geostatistics, geostatistics. In particular, we need to understand what are the what exactly is the variable, right? So variable and how to use variables. If you have taken geostatistic courses before, then this part is uh, relatively straightforward. But uh, if you have no background uh, in geostatistics, uh, if you don't really know what variables are, right, this might be, uh, it's, uh, they are not really particularly difficult, but uh, nevertheless, it's going to take a while to actually explain how to, how to, how to, uh, how to actually use this kind of dialog box. How to actually come up with the sensible numbers, right? But the purpose of this particular data analysis uh, step is to come up with some kind of description about the spatial distribution, the spatial variation of those uh, petrophysical properties, right? And the way that that this kind of a, this kind of a description is. Uh, uh, the, the the rules are usually described in terms of uh, distances, right? So so if uh, if uh, if you can imagine if there is a cell that's kind of close to these three wheels, for example, and then the properties of these three wheels are going to contribute more to this point to this particular cell than, for example, uh, the cell that's sort of or the properties that's way out on this particular wheel, right? So, so it's a kind of a distance, distance dependent analysis, right? So, 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 and a variogram is actually the right tool, the right graph to actually represent that kind of a, uh, that kind of a relation, right? So, so what we are going to do is that we will, we'll, for just for exercise purposes, just for exercise purposes, we're going to skip the data analysis step. We're just going to pretend that those data analysis step has been done, and those diagram and all those descriptions have actually provided it to us, right? And then we're going to go directly to these two buttons, the faces button and then the petrophysical button. We're going to start to work on uh, the faces button and petrophysical button right away, right? We have lots of buttons that we skipped, right? So, so data analysis is also trend modeling, right? Trend modeling. Suppose you have fluvial channels. Right, how to actually model that kind of trend, and then uh, you have a, a few more buttons that allows you to actually um, come up with um, uh, more data that allows you actually to describe those uh, describe those uh, phases and petrophysical properties in a, in a more concrete way. This is trend modeling, so uh, 
So it allows you to actually come up with a description about a particular spatial trend or spatial distribution of uh, certain uh, properties. Right? Um, but again, let's not get into that right away. Let's not get into that right now. And if we have time, we will actually talk about those things later on. So, so in order to actually, in order to actually make it easier for us to analyze things, uh, let's try to let's try to organize the the data underneath the properties tab into subfolders, right? Let's let's create a new folder, and then let's just call it upscale the logs. And then let's just uh, move those upscaled logs into this particular folder, right? And then let's try to construct another uh, folder. And then let's call it faces model. So if we call it a faces model, it means what? It means that it's a, it's something that's populating. It's a faces data that's gonna that's that will populate the entire volume, the entire uh, sort of grid. And then let's try to make another directory. Uh, let's call it petrophysical model. And then let's uh, let's um, let's copy let's copy the fluvial faces. Let's just make a copy of it. So let's copy the fluvial faces. Let's uh, how do I copy it? You have a button here, Control C, right? And then let's go to the faces model, and then paste it. So now we have a copy of fluvial faces. Let's change the name of it. It's called a fluvial phases model. Right. And let's turn off this display and display this one instead. Right. So because this, this is just a copy of this particular upscaled fluvial phases, so at, at least at this particular stage, it appears exactly the same. Right. It, it appears exactly the same. And later on, we're going to try to modify we're going to change. We're going to change this particular upscaled uh, fluvial faces uh, data, so that the fluvial faces data are populating the entire volume, right? And uh, we can do that inside of the faces uh, dialog box. Right. So we have two choices, either create a new one or edit the existing one. We're going to use the edit the existing because uh, uh, we're going to start with, we're going to start with this uh, upscaled fluvial faces log. That's called fluvial faces model. We're going to change that. Right. Um, we have, we have, we have a, a set of buttons here, right? And all those buttons are kind of connected to other dialog boxes. For example, this one, show data analysis dialog. Then it's going to open up the dialog box that's kind of uh, used when uh, during the data analysis stage. Right? But let's not get into those things yet. Um, and then we have uh, common and zone settings. Uh, if, if we click on common, then it's going to display all the options. Um, that's applicable to all the zones. And later on, we're going to look at this particular option that's called realization, right? Number realization. And if you click on zone settings, 
then it's going to display the zones. And usually we start to model the phases first, right? And then later on, when we actually try to model the petrophysical property like the, like the porosity and the permeability, we can use those phases models as some kind of control, right? As some kind of a way for us to regularize the modeling process for porosity and uh, permeability, right? So, so usually we start uh, populating the entire model by by po populating the the phases model, right? We start to model the phases first. So, if we click on this particular lock, it's gonna give us this um, this uh, this uh, this part of the dialog box, and uh, at this stage, at this stage. We have um, we have uh, three more buttons here, right? So these three more buttons allows us to actually import import the result of the data analysis step. So if we have done those data analysis inside of this particular uh, box inside of this dialog box, right? And then we can actually import the result of those data analysis by using these buttons, right? But for now, let's uh, because because we are not we have skipped the data analysis step, right? So, so we don't really have any kind of results that we can use. Um, but later on, we are going to sort of enter some numbers that's kind of provided to us, right? So, so someone else has uh, has uh, has done the data analysis step for us, so we can just use their results. And then this box method for zone phases. This is actually the algorithm. So basically, the algorithm, the, the purpose for using this kind of algorithm is actually to infer or extrapolate or kind of interpolate or um, basically just to infer the results, to infer the phases at arbitrary grid points from the phases data that's given on the wells or given on those cells that's penetrated by the wells. That's the purpose of those algorithms. And if, if you click on here, then you have um, uh, lots of uh, lots of choices, right? For discrete data, for discrete data, like phases data, the algorithm that's used the most widely is called the sequential indicator, uh, called, called indicator simulation, sequential indicator simulation, or SIS, right? And the, Patrick is actually intelligent enough to, 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 to put the sequential indicator simulation as the, the kind of default algorithm was here, right? But we're not, we're not going to use the sequential indicator simulation. We're going to use a... So here you can sort of see we have lots of zones, right? We have lots of zones. If you click here, you're going to be able to see we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, six zones, right? And then for different zones, we're going to apply different kinds of algorithms. Right. We're going to start with the simplest one. That's base criteria to top tablet. Right. Let's select top base criteria to top tablet. And then the method for this particular zone, for this particular basis criteria to top tablet zone, we're going to use assign values. Right. We're going to assign a value to that particular zone. And then, and then, um, Keep us upscale the log values unchanged if any. Uh, let's check that. And then the value that we're going to assign to that particular zone is a constant. And for the constant value, we have a bunch of choices, right? And we're going to select the background and flat plane as our choice. That's uh, that's that, that's a value of zero. Right. And then let's click on OK. For this kind of assign values, it's the simplest uh, simplest algorithm, right? Or just a uh, arbitrary or manually just uh, assign values to that particular, to all the cells in that particular zone. And now you can see it. Now you can see uh, the property for for base criteria to top tower. It's a background flat plane. It's, it's probably better to, if we, if we put on the color bar, the color legend. Right. And then inside of the zone filter, we can turn off the display of all the zones and just display the top zone. 
and you can see a few patches that has a color that's different from the background of flat plane because those patches are probably penetrated by the whales so you have whale log data for those uh, patches right. and when we did the assign values we checked that box to actually preserve the values on the or log values on the whales If you look at the other zones, if you look at the other zones, for example, if you want to look at the top tower to uh, basically to, uh, to, to, to top knees, then all those other zones are still in the shape of upscaled wheel logs, right? Because we haven't actually populated the entire model for those particular zones, right? We haven't actually populated the sales for those uh, for those zones. We only populate the sale for the base criteria to top tower zone. So if you turn off that, and then just display top tower, the top knees, those three zones. Those zones are still in the shape of upscaled wheel logs, right? So now let's uh, let's work on other zones. Let's work on other zones. And let's still go back to the phases dialog box. And then the next zone that we're going to work with is this one. Uh, top knees to top uh, tower one. Top knees to tower one. Right, top knees to top one. That's uh, that's um, that's the third zone from the bottom. One, two, three. Third zone from the bottom. And this time we're gonna use this sequential indicator simula simulation. We're gonna use the sequential indicator simulation as our method. And then the phases that we want to model. So, if you <laughs> once we have picked the zone, then this is gonna display the kind of a percentage. Right, of the di different phases. So channel margin has 0%, so maybe it's not a good idea to actually model this particular phase. But for all the other phases, we want to model them, we want to model them. So all we have to do is to select them and then click this arrow to move them to the, to the right, right side of the, of the box, right? And then we're gonna, model, we're gonna try to actually come up with um, a description about how those properties are distributed in space, right? And those are the basic tool for us to actually describe the kind of pattern for this particular phase is here. That's called a variogram. Okay. And a variogram, most of the time, it looks like this kind of thing, right? Horizontal axis is the range. Range actually means the, actually the distance between two arbitrary points. Right. So as so the vertical axis actually is some kind of description about how different the properties at those two points are. So as you actually move from small distance to larger distance, the difference or the variance or semi-variance increases with the kind of range, uh, with the kind of uh, horizontal axis, with, with the distance between those two points. Right. So if we have time, we'll describe those um, those things in more detail, but for now, let's just uh, pretend that um, those numbers uh, for describing the variogram have been uh, provided to us, right? So what are the numbers that may appear sensible? So so the background of, for the background of flat plane, uh, we're going to use the variogram type that's exponential, and then we have a major direction and minor direction. So for major direction, let's use uh, 5,000. And then minor direction, let's use um, 700. And then the vertical direction, vertical direction, it's 10, that's good. And then the animus, uh, let's give it 19. And then dip, uh, no dip, zero dip. And that's all the parameters that are needed in order to actually specify this particular this particular variable. Right. Uh, and then fraction trends, fraction trends, right? Uh, we want to trust the fraction trends. And then uh, for now, the main, for, by default, the global fraction is going to be selected on manual, right? Maybe maybe let's change it to like a, a world data, world data. Um, so it means that uh, 
when 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 the sequential indicator simulation algorithm tries to actually populate this particular zone with the background flat plane, this kind of phase, it's going to try to follow. It's going to try to generate this particular phase with this particular percentage that you have selected. Right. So in the final model that's created by this um, algorithm, about eighty-five percent of it will be background flat plane. And it's going to try to actually uh, create a create a model that follows this kind of a pr pr proportion, follows this kind of a fraction, right? And this is um, this is just for the background flat plane. Let's let's click on the next one. That's the channels end. Right? Channels end. Um, let's again go to the variogram first to specify the the variogram. Variogram type is uh, still exponential, right? And then the major direction let's give us 3500 and then minor direction 1500 and then vertical uh, vertical let's get like 25 and then atomus let's give a no, vertical is still 10 and then atomus is 25 that's channels in right and then fraction again trust the fraction trend and maybe let's uh, follow the world in there. And then live is in, live is in. Let's still go back to very one. Live is in, uh, still exponential. And then 1000, that's the major direction. Minor direction is um, 500. And then vertical direction is um, 20, uh, 10. And then angle is uh, as much as. Uh, uh, 25. For channels end, did I actually click on trusted fraction? Yeah. And then the last one is uh, crevacy. There we go. 850. And then minor direction. 500. And then vertical 10. And it's 25 fraction, trust it. Yeah. 850 TM, 25 maybe. That means it's 1,510 and then 25. And then channel's end is um, This is very strange, 1,500, 10, 25. Oh, the, the problem that I was having is that I forgot to uncheck this particular box. So that's why it's kind of a, it doesn't allow me to, doesn't allow me to specify different variables for different phases, right? So that's something that I did wrong. So you have to sort of uncheck this box. Then it's going to allow you to specify different variables for different phases. So let's uh, start all over again. It's a, for the background flat plane, it's a sphere, uh, it's an exponential. And then major direction is 500, 5,000. Minor direction is um, 700. And then vertical is um, 10. And then azimuth is 19. So it's a 5,710 and then 19, right? Trusted fractions. And then channels end, channels end, channels end, it's a still ex exponential and then major direction, it's 3,500. And then 
1500 and then vertical is again 10 and the angle is uh, 25 right. so if you look back at the background uh, background flat plane it's uh, different right. uh, let's channel then and then let's let's do levy Major direction is uh, 1000, and then minor direction is 500, and then vertical is uh, 10, and then azimuth is 25. And then the last one is uh, 850, and then 500. Yeah, now let's click on OK and then it's going to try to actually create the populate the sales in this particular zone for following the that particular specification that we have given. Let's just look at that particular zone which is from uh, top knees to target one. Right? And that's the zone that we have uh, created a model for. And then now let's uh, let's try another one. Let's try another one. And that's a sequential indicator simulation. So if we want to prevent any kind of further changes to this particular setting, let's click on this particular lock to lock all the settings. And now let's move on to the to the to another different layer to a different zone. So now it's a top needs to target one. Right? Now let's do target one to target two. Right, top of one or top of two. And then let's unclick this lock. Um, this time we're not going to use the sequential indicator, but we're going to use mod object modeling stochastic. Right, we're going to do this thing. And so faces bodies, faces bodies, we're going to use a, a, this button called add a new adaptive channel. Um, so once we clicked on this button, you're going to have these adaptive channels, adaptive channels, this item that's inside of the, the box. And, and, uh, um, and then the background is still going to be the zero phase, right? The background flat plane. And uh, these are the settings for sort of, because it's, a, it's an object modeling stochastic. So it's going to have some randomness in the generated model, right? Even though you are, describing the object, but it's a sto stochastic object model, so it's still going to have some randomness, and then it's going to need a scene number, a random scene number. Um, the autobot, that's, um, that's not really used very often, but let's go back to the faces bodies and try to understand what's actually, uh, what's actually being used here. So settings, uh, use body, and then we have to make two phases for the adaptive channel. One is the channel's end, right? So, so here you have to sort of select. You have to select the phase that corresponds to channel's end, right? And this part is actually grayed out because this is mandatory. You must have because it's an adaptive channel. It's a channel, right? So, so channel's end is like a mandatory. You must have a phase for the channel's end, right? And in our in our upscaled log data. The, the, the channel CN phase is a phase one, so we have to sort of select that. And then a second one is called levy. But levy is uh, uh, optional, it's uh, sort of not mandatory. So if you if you only have channel CN but don't have uh, don't have a levy for the channel, then you don't have to check it, right? But if you check it, then it's going to display this kind of thing. You have uh, 
levy sand that's right on the boundary of the of the channel sand. And then this button is kind of important because um, usually uh, the, the the fraction that that's uh, sort of specified here is uh, probably inconsistent with this upscaled percentage, right? So in the upscaled log, we have like 33.31 percent. That's channel sand for this particular zone, right? For this particular zone, and then 30. Dot forty-five, four five percent that belongs to Levy's end, right? For this particular zone. So we have to click on this button in order to actually come up with a more realistic estimate about this um, channels end and Levy's end distribution. Um, that's kind of consistent with the upscale logs. Of course, you can also specify the number of channels. If you do not specify the number of channels, then it's the stochastic algorithm that's going to try to create those channels for us. It's going to have some randomness on it. Um, and pretty much that's the only only part of the dialog box that we need to actually specify in order to actually describe the adaptive channel. And then we have a layout layout. So so this layout is going to be used to actually control the orientation and then the kind of amplitude wavelengths and the relative sinuosity of the channels. Orientation is basically telling us What's going to be the the direction of the channels, right? This is in in terms of compass degrees. So if it's zero degrees, then it's just from north to south or south to north that kind of direction. Right? But if you have a certain degree, then the channel are going to have an orientation that's kind of consistent with uh, this kind of a degree. And then the orientation, because it's a stochastic, right? It's a stochastic modeling. So the orientation is not just a specific value. Of course, you can specify a specific value if you choose deterministic. If you choose deterministic, then it's going to allow you to specify a fixed value, right? But if you instead choose a certain kind of distribution, for example, the default is triangular, right? And then the orientation is going to follow this triangular distribution. And this triangular distribution is going to have a certain range with a minimum angle, a maximum sort of a standard deviation, and then medium uh, mean, that kind of thing, right? And then you have a bunch of uh, different choices, right? For example, if you are more used to normal distribution, then, then you can select normal, right? Or truncated normal, right? Uniform, um, different kinds of distributions. And then once you select the distribution, for example, if you select normal, then the number of boxes behind it is going to sort of consistent with that. So here you select a normal distribution. Normal distribution has just two parameters. One is the mean, the other one is the standard devi deviation. So this box is grayed out, right? So let's still go back to triangular. Um, and then the, 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 the simulator is going to try to actually create lots of lots of channels, but their orientation are going to have a probability that's kind of following this particular selected distribution. And the amplitude, amplitude, how, how much you want the deviation to be, right? Maybe if the amplitude is very big, then it's going to be a sort of very kind of a snaking look like a, a channel shape, right? And then wavelength, wavelength, that's this particular distance. Right. Is it a kind of very compact or is it kind of very spread out? And then relative sinuosity. This is actually a description about how how much it looks like a sine wave. A sine wave is exactly a, a sort of mathematical thing, right? But in reality, it's not really it's not really a exact sine wave, right? So so you have you can specify some deviation from the exact sine wave by using by using this particular number. Right. This is sort of the map view. This is sort of the map view of the channel. And then you have a cross section view. Here you can describe how, how the channel should look like in terms of the cross section, the width, and then the thickness, that kind of thing. Right. Uh, you can specify the width, the thickness, and the width fraction. So 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 for this uh, for this particular exercise, we will not try to adjust that. In order to actually come up with those uh, sensible numbers, you need some extra data in order to actually understand it. And then this is just for channels end, right? So you can sort of see it's just a yellow, right? But now you have you have a description about the levy, right? You can describe the width and the thickness of the levy on the sides of the channel. Right? And then you also have, you also have a box for trends, right? So this is going to allow you to actually specify some additional data to import some additional data to actually constrain how the object is going to be created. Right. Later on, we're going to look at this particular 
option. We're going to look at the horizontal. How can we actually specify a probability service, right? And uh, and uh, uh, that's 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 uh, let's let's just accept all the default settings for now, right? So so for the layout, the map view thing, we're just not going to change anything. For the section, we're going to accept all the defaults. Maybe we're going to accept all the defaults, and then we can just click on OK, and then let's see what's going to what's going to be created. This is for for the zones top one, top two. So once the calculation is done, we can look at top one, top two. So after we have finished populating the entire model, we will have to examine that model by using different kind of techniques. But uh, for now, let's just go through the generation process. And then that's um, um, that's top of the one to top of the two, right? Let's, uh, let's still prevent any further changes. But this time we're gonna make a copy of it. So the, all the settings that we have done for this particular zone, we can make a copy of it by clicking this button. Right. And then let's move on to this layer. Right. Top and two to top top. And then we can just paste it. We can paste the setting that we got from the, the, lower, the lower layer to this particular zone by clicking this button. And then unlock the thing. Um, one of the things that so so all the settings all the settings are kind of copied over right from the lower layer. But there's one number that we need to change, which is this fraction percentage. This fraction percentage must be adapted to the percentage that we the the, the percentage for this particular zone. And for this particular zone. The channel Zen is actually 5.89%, and the Levy Zen is actually 88.12%. Right? So we have to click on this blue arrow to make an adjustment, to make sure that for this particular zone, for this particular zone, the percentage is actually correct. The fraction, the fraction is actually correct. Right. And then let's click on OK. So now we have generated the model for uh, one more zone. That's top two to top tower. For some reason, it's taking really long for me to actually do the calculation. Yeah, now it's done. So uh, let's look at the model that's created here. Right. OK, so for now, we have created all the models for top tower to top knees, and then basic criteria to top tower. Right. So that's all the model we have so far. And then we still have two more layers, two more zones. Right. Nice one to top knees nice and top eve to knees nice one. Um, now let's uh, let's let's try to uh, create the model for this particular layer. And this time we're gonna add something. Uh, add something new to it. We're gonna add some representation of the so-called oxbow lakes. And in order to do that, we need to so uh, first we need to double click or right click on the uh, fluvial phases model, this particular property, and then go to the setting. Um, so for now, the color table is the fluvial color table, but we can click on it, click on this button, and then try to insert one more phase to it. And then this phase, we're going to call it Oxbow Lake. We're going to call it Oxbow Lakes. And then the background color is going to be blue. And then the pattern, uh, let's select something that uh, might make sense. Let's select this one. 
Right. And then click on OK. And uh, let's just close this dialog box. And then we have created a new face for our color table. And right away, you can see it here. Oxbow legs, that's blue, right? Uh, in our actual faces log data, we don't really have this particular face. But we're going to manually add something to it. Add this particular face to the, to the query model. Again, let's go back to the faces dialog box. Uh, let's lock this particular zone and then move on to this particular zone, right? Knees one to top knees, and then uncheck the. Um, what might be a good thing to do? No, uh, let's 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 first copy something over. Let's copy it from this one. All right, let's still make a copy, make a copy of uh, the settings for this one. And then we go to this particular zone, this one, the top knees. And then we can just uh, make a, a paste the settings over. All right. Um, but maybe let's, uh, let's click on this blue arrow to make sure that the, the, the adaptive channel has the right percentage or the right fraction. And then this time we're going to click on this button to add a new geometric body. Right. That's the new geometric body. And then this time we're going to uh, change the geometry of it. Let's change the geometry of it. Right. Um, so, if, so if we click on the geometry tab, it's going to allow you to actually specify the kind of geometry. Right? You have an oxbow lake as the ge geometry. Right. Right. And then it's going to allow you to specify the orientation, the major width and the minor width. Right. Again, because it's a stochastic, so you don't really have to sort of input a deterministic number. You can just choose a distribution that you like. And then all the oxbow lakes are going to be generated based upon the description that you have chosen. But let's go back to the settings. Let's go back to the settings. What's going to be the phases that's going to be used to describe oxbow lakes, right? It's a uh, you have to sort of select this particular face that you just created, Oxbow Lakes. You have to cl click on that, right? And then specify a fraction for it. In our upscale log data, there's no Oxbow Lakes, this particular face, right? Let's, uh, so it's 0% up here. But let's manually just change it to like 5% or something, right? Of course, you can also specify the number of objects, but uh, let's not do that. Let's just uh, use a 5%, right? For exercise purposes, um, and then once you actually manually uh, insert those objects into your model, you will have to replace the phases that's kind of already there, right? So you have a rules, you have a rules tab, and then the default action is to replace all other phases default. So when you try to model this Oxbow Lakes object, then it everywhere the algorithm will um, for 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 the for those places where you're gonna where the algorithm is gonna insert an Oxbow Lake, it's gonna replace uh, all other phases, right? So this makes sure that uh, for every cell, there's only one phase in that cell. There's no kind of duplication. There's no uh, other phases. There's no sort of two phases in, in the same cell, right? So every cell will have just one phase for it. And that's all we want to do. Let's click on OK. And then it's going to do the calculation. Yeah, so that's uh, that's uh, knees one to top knees, and you'll be able to see those uh, blue phases. That's the oxbow lake. You can sort of see a histogram. That's like five percent of it. The reason that it doesn't look like oxbow is just because of the cell that we are actually using is kind of a two cores. The the mesh that we are using is two cores. If you if you have a very fine mesh, those those are those are those oxbow lakes will indeed look like an oxbow lake. And then, and then we have just one more layer left, right? We have one more layer. 
that's top eve to this one top e top uh, top eve to this one and for this particular zone for this particular zone we're going to try to actually incorporate some kind of external probability description so let's go back to the input pane and right click and then we're going to import a file this file is basically just a description about uh, the probability of the fluvial channel and then the file type channel probability this file is created by other people right it's provided to us so of course patrol can also use um, its own functionality to create this kind of probability files but it's just an ordinary service it's a z map plus grid it's a service it's a service data basically we can just click on open and then it's uh, elevation depth it's a regular surface uh conformable so, so but this box doesn't really matter so so let's just click on okay then we're going to have this um, channel probability data so in our uh, input pane if we want to look at this uh, data we could just display it in a uh, in a 2d window right but let me turn off the let me turn off the thing here right. for now the color range is um, not scaled correctly but you can sort of see the shape right the shape of the probability um So if you click on channel probability, you're going to be able to actually see a surface, this kind of thing, right? This uh, context that we're tab. If you click on it, it's going to allow you to adjust the color table, right? But for now, let's uh, uh, maybe maybe you can do that, right? So for now, it's uh, the color table is not kind of adapted to this uh, probability service. But in principle, you're going to be able to see probability of one that's kind of in the interior, and then pro a probability of zero in the on the outside these are probability congruence basically the, the problem is that if i click on this particular button it may stop the my my installation of the of patrol this might be some kind of bug uh, but uh, let me still give it a try but uh, maybe it's not a good uh, it's not a good idea for me to try that right now at uh, after after i build the phases model let's 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 try to adjust that color table so let's let's click on phases again and then this time lock the previous sample this time it's the bottom layer right it's a it's a sickness top eve to this one right um so oh okay so it's a default to a sequential indicator simulation but but maybe let's still make a copy make a copy of the top needs to top of the uh no top of the one to top of the two make a copy of it and then we can go to top eve to this one and then let's just paste it to this zone um for this bottom layer for the upscale logs there's very little sort of percentage that's uh, or fraction that's associated with channel center or levy center if you click on this arrow it's just 0.42 percent 0.42 percent are associated with those um, channel and levy sands uh, so so if we try to actually create those uh create those uh, adaptive channels then we can hardly see them maybe just a few cells are going to have those uh, properties so let's let's just manually increase the fraction to like 20 percent it's still a very small fraction right still a very small fraction but uh, maybe it's enough for us to actually see them and then layout we're going to still use the layout that's kind of default values right these are actually copied over from the 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 the, the, the table one to table two layer table one to table two, two zone and then sections uh, and then there is we're not going to change those things but but in the trends we now have a probability surface now so we can click on horizon horizontal horizontal so body insertion point probability right body insertion point probability what this thing actually is is that uh, it's going to try to use this particular probability surface and try to match the probability that's described on this surface when it actually tries to when it actually creates the adaptive channel thing right 
And then at this point, we can just select the probability, the channel probability service that we just imported and then put it in there. Um, but, the, the, but the probability service are just going to be used as a point, a body in certain point probability. So, so if you look at the surface, it's just a, a for every point on that surface, there is a probability associated with it. So, so it's not really treating it as some kind of channel. But if you look at the shape of the two-dimensional surface, it's got some kind of channel shape, right? It's gonna it has this kind of shape. It may look like a channel. Right? So, if you want to so also in, enforce that kind of thing, channel trend, you can just click on it, use channel routing, and then channel routing weight. Depending upon the how how large the weights are, it's going to try to follow more or less the the, the direction of the channel. Right? Uh, maybe seventy five is a kind of reasonable number, right? But the number has to go from zero to one. It has to be between zero and one. It cannot go over one. If you give it like a ninety five percent or ninety nine percent, that's like a, a very high probability already. Right? And uh, and it, let's just click on OK. That's 20%. That's 20% of the channel. 20% of the model should be the fluid channel and the levy. Right. Of course, it's not going to sort of follow exactly what the trend is actually telling it to do. This channel trend is basically just telling it the probability or possibility, right? But for this particular realization, for this particular realization that we're actually doing, it may not exactly follow that particular trend. Right? But if you actually do lots of uh, lots of realizations and then average them together, you may be able to see some kind of consistency with uh, with this particular imported uh, probability service, right? Um, but now let's let's click on let's try to adjust this uh, the color range of this particular surface and see what this uh, surface actually looks like, right? Uh, it may take a while, but if the if the if the system hands, I will just stop the video, and then next time we can sort of look at the result of the adjusting the color table. Oh, now it looks like it's okay. Maybe put a color legend on. Right. So, But the color range seems to be inconsistent because it's giving you some kind of negative values, right? It's not supposed to happen because the all the numbers, all the numbers are actually positive. All the numbers that are actually inside of this particular data file are actually positive. It's supposed to go from one to zero, from zero to one, basically. It's supposed to go from zero to one. Right? But uh, but for some reason, it looks like it's going from minus one to zero. So. Oh, I see. It's a uh, it's uh, elevation depth. So so I specify I probably specified the the template wrong, right? but it's okay. It's okay. It's just for visualization purposes. So all the numbers that's inside of the data file are still actually positive. So let me stop this video here. And ne next time we're going to talk about uh, the how to actually pop to populate the porosity and the permeability. Those are those are petrophysical models or uh, petrophysical properties.